So now uh, all our data that we get you now will be in the form of a tensor or it has to be you know we have to convert it to the form of the tensor so now how how where does the data lies and how do you handle it how do you how do you get this and then you want to get it in terms of batches okay now for uh, the updation of weights now how do you do all of them now is the next uh, idea that uh, we shall be looking into now in the second uh, tutorial now which is data second tutorial sheet uh, sorry second uh, tutorial link here now, which is uh, data set and data loaders uh, let me go there now here uh, now what they are doing is uh, uh, before that now we need a couple of data sets now we need to look at this dash data sets Now, what are the data sets that are available in PyTorch? The one, there is a list. Maybe I'm Yes. Yeah. Okay. See, these are some of the data sets uh, that are uh, available in PyTorch itself. Now, when it is available in the PyTorch uh, repository itself, now you don't need to worry about much. Okay. Now, when the most of the times what happens is the data will not be present here. At that time, we should know how to create a data loader, uh, as it is called as. Now, these are some of the data sets that are available. Caltech 101. Caltech 205, 256, Celeb, AC, 10 so on and so forth. Now we have a lot of these uh, image classification data, okay. image net and stuff. Okay. So, and then you have image detection or segmentation data that also you have image pairs, video classification, video prediction, so on and so forth. You have uh, enough data. Now you can play around uh, these things. Now here, now we are using a data called as fashion mnist now fashion mnist is a group of uh, 10 class it's a 10 class problem when which you have 10 kinds of clothes okay now i'm not sure about what are the kinds that are there but for all practical purposes you can say them from 0 to 9 now 0 is something 1 is something okay now you can assume that okay. now let's look into how does uh, it work well okay so now now what are the necessary libraries that you want to load the first library is the torch itself okay now then uh, torch.utils.data uh, you have to get uh, you have to work with get the create a data set for that you need this data set okay you can see this capital d here and then to download from the repository you need this package called as data sets and then now once you have got the image you need to convert that image into tensor for that you need this uh, transform now that is what is called as transformation now you need to transform it to a tensor now for that you need two tensor and then you'll be plotting now just to see how how the images look for that you need this pi plot now which is uh, matplotlib.pyplot as plt you are aliasing it as plt and then you will be using it these are the necessary libraries now for our work okay so now uh, as uh, you are very much aware, any data that is there is uh, has two parts to it. Now, one is the training data. Now, when which you try to understand the relationship between input and output. The other is the test data, which is used to evaluate uh, the relation. Okay. Now, similarly, this also has two parts of it. Now, one is the training data and test data. Now, they have been made separate. Okay. So now our aim is uh, to take them. Now, where is that available? Datasets dot fashion mnist. Okay, this is the name of this thing. Okay, fashion mnist. Now, uh, root equals to data. Now, what does it mean? Is now where do this data is present? Now, it is present in the folder called as data. Now, that means that in the current working directory, now it is present in the folder data. Now, I am looking at the training data. Okay, training data. 
and then download is equal to two. If the data is not present in this specific folder, what do you do? You download it. And then once you have downloaded the image, okay, you apply this transformation. Now, what is the transformation? Now, it's an image. Now, an image for all practical purposes is nothing but a matrix. Now, you convert it into a tensor. Okay. Now, similarly, you do it for uh, the test data also. Now, it is present in uh, the root, you know, which is from the working directory, which is the data. Now, if training is false, now that means that you are getting the test data. Download equals to true. Now, that means that if the data is not present in this particular root, you download it. And then uh, once you download the images, you convert them into tensors. Okay. That is the idea. Now, let's run this. It will take some time. Yeah, it will uh, take some time. And meanwhile, uh, this is used to just uh, sh show the images. Yeah, but uh, we are not interested in that. So I'll not be going ahead how, how PyPlot works. How, how do you create this uh, access and other stuff? I will not be uh, interested in that. So I'll just wait till this happens. Yeah, done. So, and then uh, it's a code snippet to visualize. Yeah, this is a code, this address. Yeah, these are different, uh, what do you call labels that are there, code, dress, sandal. For all practical purposes, you, know, you can number them. You can say that this is from 0 to 9. You have 10 classes, uh, marked from 0 to 9. Okay, yeah. Now, this is a good case. Now, why it is a good case? Now, because your data that you need, is present in the PyTorch repository itself. But in most of the cases, we might not be so lucky. Okay. Sometimes there will be some custom data or some sensitive data, customer sensitive data, or from confidential data might be there. At that time, your data that is there you know, may not be in the repository of PyTorch. Now at that time, now you should create this uh, data, you should curate this data on your own, you should write a wrapper script around it to get it. Let's see how to do that. And that is called as data custom data set. Okay. So now, now whenever you have this uh, custom data set, now it is having uh, two parts to it. Now, what are those two parts? Now, let us uh, go there. Okay. Now, in this custom data sets. Get custom data sets. Now you have this root directory you now that is called as uh, image directory. Now this will be an OS path, okay. and then you will be having something called as uh, annotation file. Okay. Now this will be preferably a CSV file. Now, what it will have is, now it will have uh, the relative path. Now, from the image directory, how do you find the image name? Okay, so re real uh, relative path and the image name, or uh, now whatever data. Now, we are not pretty much concerned about the modality here. It can be uh, sequence also. And then now uh, it will have the label. Okay, now it will be a CSV file with uh, two columns. Okay, now this will be dot CSV. Okay, now using this, now we should be creating a data set. Now this is the folder, and then from that folder, now what is the image name? Now what is the label of that image? Now that will be there uh, from here now let's look at how do you create your own custom data set so now for that uh, uh, you need os now why do you need os now because you want to retrieve the file from its path for that you need uh, this uh, library os and then you need pandas now why do you need pandas now you'll be reading the csv file and then you'll be working with that now to do that, we need a PD data frames. Now we'll be needing data frames so that you need pandas. 
and then to read the images you need this torchvision.io you need this read image okay yeah so now uh, let's uh, i am assuming that you are pretty much comfortable with object oriented programming so what do i mean by that as you know what is in it you know what is uh, double underscore mean here okay all those things you are comfortable is what i'm assuming okay so now and then you are pretty much comfortable with inheritance uh, is what is being looked into here now you are creating a class now which is with the name custom image data set now which is a child of this data set okay now what is this data set now you can look at it here earlier now this is what is used to create a data set okay which is child of this so and then you are uh, in your init method your constructor you have self now which refers to the instance itself and the annotation file now this annotation file is what i said as uh, a csv file you know where in which your uh, uh, all the image names and then the relative path or the image name and the labels will be there and then the image directory the root uh, to that and then transform now this is uh, do you want to apply some kind of transformations on the input data on your features on your x target transformation do you want to apply any transformation on your y on your label now they they have been uh, uh, given as none okay so now uh, self dot image labels now uh, now how do you get it now pd dot uh, read csv now you get you read this whole of the annotation file and then uh, you self dot image directory now this is a path now whatever transforms you have is being initialized in the constructor method and then these two methods should be there <clears throat> these are the compulsory methods the whole thing should be almost as it is now the length now should it should be able to give uh, the length of uh, image labels now image labels is nothing but the csv file which is there now whatever is the length of it now it should be able to give now that means that so many uh, items are there that is the the overall length like this now how do you get the item now now how do you get the item is via its index okay so now let's try to understand this now for this get item method now you are passing this index now uh, now what is this index now in a csv file now i'm saying that now this which example are you looking at okay now this is what is told here as idx okay yeah which example now which row you are looking into okay so and then image path image path os dot path dot join so you are joining two paths now what are the two paths now one is image directory now that is your path and then image labels now which is nothing but your annotation file dot i lock now that means i lock is refers to i need to access rows now which row you want to access now you want to access the idx now the index now which index you want to access let's say that i want to access this index of 0 now that means that the relative path now that means that i am joining this image directory which is there i am joining this image directory with this relative path now that means that now i have for an image i have the full path that is there okay now this is your the first thing that is your image path now once you have got the image path then what do you do you read that image okay you read that image that is what read image from the image path now then what do you do now you have got the image okay fine and then you want the label right now where is label now in this image labels now which is an annotation file in the same in the annotation file that you have in the index now the first column that you have is the label you get it okay idx1 now that means that you get the label now if there is any transform that is uh, need to be done self dot transform to transform the image now using that if there is any target transformation you transform the label using this uh, tra target transform which is uh, specified and then you return the image and the label okay now this is a very simple code snippet now that is uh, used here okay. now most of the times we will be needing this custom image data set now we'll be needing this specific uh, thing and then we will be giving you custom data sets so that you can work on so that you should be very much proficient with how do you uh, 
get this uh, data whenever you have uh, uh, the data which is not present in your PyTorch repository. Yeah. The same thing has been explained here. Okay. So now you have got uh, the data. Okay. Good. Now you have curated the data. Now, uh, good. So now then what? Now then you need to create something called as data loader. Okay. Now, uh, to create the data loader, now first you take the training data which you have fetched from the source and you are creating a batches of 64. Now, that is what I told you. You are creating a batches of 64 and shuffle equals to true. Now, this is an interesting uh, argument shuffle equals to true. Now, that means that uh, every time you shuffle the batches, okay, every time, now it will not be in the same order. Now, every time you shuffle the batches. Okay. Now that will give you the uh, train data loader and similarly test data, whatever the batch size you want to specify and then whether you want to give shuffle is true or not. See in test loader, now it is not mandatory that you should give shuffle equals to true. It makes sense if you give shuffle equals to false. Now because you'll be evaluating only once. Okay. So you, you will not be having multiple epochs over uh, the test data. So now it doesn't mean anything now when you give shuffle equals to true in uh, the, the test case, in the test data. Okay. Yeah. You can run this and then you can access uh, these uh, using ITER iterator next. Now when you use this, you'll be able to access the each block. Okay. This is just plotting it. Yeah. So now what has happened is now now your whole data that is there because the outcome of this your data has been uh, divided into d1 d2 so on till some dk okay so where in which each di will be xj comma yj it will be a tuple xj yj j is equal to 1 to 64 Okay, now you have considered a batch size of 64. Now each of them will be a batch of 64 as per that. Okay, now this is how, now, now you have curated the data. Now you have obtained the data and kept it in the form of a tensor. Okay, now, now what is that we have done? Now data is ready. This is the step that we have done now. Okay. So now let's look into the next step. <clears throat> That's all is uh, from this uh, sheet. Okay. Let's go into the next one. Let me leave this. I don't need data sets also.